Every once in a while, a jewel comes along that absolutely hits every single mark in terms of the criteria that we use to value jewelry or value any piece of art. You're talking about provenance, quality, size, rarity, condition, all of those things. And in this bracelet, I think every single box is ticked. piece that we're looking at today is a magnificent 1927 design by Cartier. The piece was made in the absolute height of the Art Deco period and Cartier was the absolute leader of these designs. So let's start with this central stone, this amazing 47.07 carat sapphire. It is Burmese in origin and it is unheated which makes it rare already. 99% of all sapphire is heat treated, this is not. What makes it really exceptional is the clarity. To use a stone that is so clear for a cabochon is quite unusual. Normally this type of stone would have been faceted to allow the viewer to see more sparkle and more depth and more clarity of the stone. To be able to make a cabochon out of a stone that is this clear and free of inclusions is very rare and very luxurious. The second interesting point is there are some clues to the previous life of this sapphire before 1927 when Cartier put it in this bracelet. There are two little depressions on the back of the stone, which you can see if you look very closely, and it leads us to believe this actually might have been a button on some kind of a regal garment, but more likely it was probably part of an Indian turban ornament, sort of an aigrette ornament, that the Cartier family may have found on one of their many trips to India. So there's a very good chance that that's where this stone came from from and it may have had quite a long life and those little divots on the back are an interesting clue to what might have been the first life of this sapphire. Now we move on to these, the diamonds. I love these stones. These are antique pairs, each about 10 carats, both D color absolutely gorgeous. And when you see these sort of old mine antique cuts, you know, the outlines may be a little bit irregular, the faceting might not be exactly symmetrical, and the culets, that sort of bottom part, when you look through and you see the dot at the very bottom, that's the bottom facet, are bigger than what you would see on a modern stone. And anytime we see that, an open culet, we know that this is an antique cut. And then finally, if you look at the strap of the bracelet, this is just classic Art Deco, all right angles. Since the bracelet was made in 1927, we know that it came just two years after the great Art Deco exposition, the exposition in Paris in 1925, which really was the zenith of Art Deco design. So to see these very square shapes, just those square sapphires surrounded by baguette diamonds and platinum was a real antidote to what had come before in the Belle Epoque period with swags and bows and flowers and everything being en tremblant and moving. Another interesting fact about this bracelet for me is it's the second time it's been offered at Sotheby's. So we had this bracelet in our catalog in 1995. We sold it from a beautiful private collection from an estate in Palm Beach, and we offered it at that time for $250,000 to $300,000. So I think over 25 years, that's a pretty good return when you think about the bracelet coming in now at two to three million, not only because of the strength of the market for Art Deco jewelry, particularly Cartier Art Deco jewelry, but also exceptional quality colored stones. So I think beautiful Burmese, cashmere, and Ceylon sapphires are one of the really strongest parts of the jewelry market right now, and this is exceptional. Thank you.